all about beating the Warriors. They made the blockbuster trade of the offseason, swapping out Chris Paul for a younger superstar in Russell Westbrook. And with Westbrook and James Harden reuniting in Houston, two ball-dominant guys who both play the same position, what could possibly go wrong? Well, Charles Barkley can answer that, saying the only way this works is if Russ gives up his point guard duties to Harden. So, Cece, which player do you think is going to have to adjust their game more? How, how does this all play out? The way for this to work is both players have to adjust. You can't depend on one player to adjust. But it has a lot to do with the skill level, the intellect, adjustments. Before you say, oh, okay, who's the better player? When we drafted Randy Moss, immediately I had to make some adjustments. Not only did I have to give up my Z receiver, which is the flanker, to the tight end side, off the ball, goes in motion a lot. I had to give that up to Randy because he was more fit to be a Z, and it was easier for him to learn the offense from that position. So was it natural for me to give it up? Yes. Was it better for Randy for me to be able to give it up? Yes. But did Randy have the ability to do anything else? No, not initially coming in. So when you look at Harden and you look at, uh, at Russ, what's their skill set? James Harden be able to score the basketball at a level that we haven't seen since Wilt Chamberlain. Now, do I want to jeopardize that with Russ? Because Russ is not good playing off the ball. So I can't just make Russ play the two guard when his skill set is everything but a two guard. The shooting guard, Russ is not a good shooter. So, no, you have to be able to mix it up. You also have to be able to play at some type of pace where you don't have to set it up, and Russ can take it either off the rebound, him or Harden, because both of them are very good rebounding guards, and before the defense is able to get up, set up. But this is a huge compromise for both the players. It's like a marriage. Sometimes someone else is going to have to compromise a little more than the other. 50-50 doesn't mean equal, but both of these players have to look at their game. They talked to each other and said that they wanted this. Now let's see what they do to accommodate the other player. Right, they, they both have to make the adjustments. Here's the hardest part for Mike D'Antoni and for the Rockets. And I think this was a smart trade. I think you make this. You can upgrade from Chris Paul to Russ player four years younger, you make that move when you're within Harden's championship window. But the complicating factor is this. Of the two players, the guy who can threaten a defense more without the ball in his hands is James Harden. So that way you would actually be saying, Russ, keep the ball in your hands, not as much as he did in OKC, but more so than Chris Paul had it, because you still have to guard Harden if he doesn't have the ball in his hands, because he's such a threat to shoot. But Russ is obviously not as efficient as James Harden when James Harden has the ball in his hands. So what both these players must do is become better without the basketball. It's something, James, that I think frustrated Chris Paul yep. last year. Neither one of them are great as far as movement without the ball. Right. Going on the baseline, relocating, taking a guy down, running him off a back screen. Those things, they haven't done a bunch of it, but their skill set at that is not as high as the other things they do offensively. And the last few years, the way each of them, I believe, had justified it internally is when I have the ball in my hand, which is so much of the time I'm doing so much work, when I don't have the ball, that's my time to rest on the court. Well, this year, for both of them, they're going to have less workload as far as ball in their hand. So Russ is going to have to be hard cutting to the basket, back screening, what Chris is talking about. And James is going to have to be relocating for shots. If they do that, this can work. One of the things this helps the Rockets with is last year, what did we keep hearing Shaq and Chuck say on Inside the NBA and all about the Houston Late in playoff games, when you just need a basket, they're still just shooting threes. When you just need some type of high, high percentage shot, they didn't have anyone other than Harden who could get to the rim. Russ can still get to the rim at an elite level. Russ, I think, should help them late in games as far as we don't need a three. What we need is the best basket we can find. But that it's going to take 46 minutes of them working together to get to that point. Two problems late in games. Russ is not very good from the free throw line. Teams, will he go to the bucket knowing that he can get fouled? We've seen that with other players, that they tend to stay away from the bucket. And if Russ, when he's on the point, Harden, as good of a shooter he is, he's not a good spot-up shooter. He almost dribbles the ball at least one time for every... So you don't need that as a two-guard. So his skill set, even though it's good, 
he likes to dribble the basketball before he shoots it. So it's going to be something that's going to evolve as the season goes on because this is not a natural fit for either one of these guards. So that's my question. How long does D'Antoni give this trying to make it work before he just says, okay, Harden, go do what you did for that 30-game stretch last year. We need wins heading into the that playoffs. Won't, that, won't, that won't work. They, and I don't listen. They're, they're assuming they're not as injured as they were last year. They're not going to need Harden to be a one-man show for as long of a stretch as they did last season. But you, you are not going to be able to marginalize Russ the way you did Chris Paul, which is why it does take both of these guys saying, having a come to Jesus moment together of, man, we've both done everything in this league we ever could have imagined except for win a title. And in fact, the last time either one of us were even in the finals was seven years ago when we played together as kids in Oklahoma City. So figuring out the push and the pull there. We saw Russ, by the way, go from 24 shots per game the year before they got Paul George down to 20. Now, 20 is still the fourth most in basketball. But last year, Paul George actually took more shots per game than Russell Westbrook. It probably surprised people, yeah. but he did. Like, can both of those guys take 17 to 18 shots per game instead of both of them. Harden last year took 24 himself. Like, they, he led the league in, in that category. Can they both take a slightly lesser role? Because the other factor here is Eric Gordon didn't have a great relationship with Chris Paul, and I'm sure he's one of the people glad Chris Paul's gone. But Eric Gordon's also got to be thinking, like, I mean, how many plays a game is going to be run for me? One, Two, like you've got to make sure Eric Gordon, who is a very important third piece of this team, feels involved as well. So that, listen, this is a difficult adjustment for him. It's all, it's, it's all. Everything's going to work out. I called her and everything. We're living together. We get married. Then your favorite workout outfit gets bleached, Jenna, when they wash the clothes, and you're like, ah, oh, you know something, man? I was better off by myself. Okay, dude, averaged 36 points last year. Didn't need no type of help. So there's going to be some times, like you said. Oh, I can do this by myself, regardless of, oh, yeah, I called him this offseason and said I wanted to play with them. Yeah, bleach my outfit and see what happens. You and Danielle discuss bleaching your outfit. Is that, is that one of the big fights no, in your no, household? No, Nick doesn't do laundry. You Nick, bleach Nick, my workout no, outfit. I don't have a workout outfit, and I don't do laundry. Coming up. He don't dress himself. No. Do the Lakers right. have enough around AD and LeBron to win a title? Still ahead. This show is called First Things First. Glad you're watching. I've worked too hard to think, care about those things.